Welcome to InnoTrans 2016 in Berlin. Great, you have joined us live here at the world's largest rail industry trade fair. Just to give you some impressive numbers of how big this international come together of the industry is. We have 2,760 exhibitors, exhibitors in total, 130,000 visitors from 146 countries. And the whole area alone stretches around 94,000 square meters. Right now, we are at the Siemens Digital Service Center in Hall 4.2. I'm happy to introduce Mr. Gerhard Kress, Head of Mobility Data Service Center to you. In the last 12 months, he has built a team of data-driven services. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kress. Thank you very much. Mr. Kress, the railway industry is quite an old industry, which today faces challenges resulting from massive population growth in urban areas. It is estimated that by 2050, 70% of the world's population will be living in cities. What does that mean for the industry? Well, for the industry, I think it's a massive change ahead because with digitalization and with you can do with data, uh, you need to make sure that you can transport the people in time, uh, have them commute to work, and then you also have to make sure that all the goods are delivered in time as well because your logistics then is, would break down, people couldn't afford living in, in cities anymore. And this is the part where digitalization is really a key point. Because if you look at today's reality in, in the rail industry, which is a very old industry, uh, focused on processes around um, preventive maintenance activities and, and of course reactive activities when something breaks, um, this is not working anymore if you have to have a very complex logistical system that works and you can rely on. If you look at all the, the major cities, they're all struggling with delays, um, trains getting stuck on a metro line, and then you have to plan around that and, and make sure you can still get the people where they need to go. And here's the part where data and digitalization is really making a difference. Because if you can predict what's happening on your vehicles, if you can make sure that your infrastructure is fully understood, you can make sure it's available, it's functioning, trains are on time, and all these complex logistics change work. And that is the massive change for the industry that's going to happen now in this just started to unfold. Okay. Mr. Kress, in an article on how trains become data-driven, you wrote that 100 billion data points are generated by a typical fleet of regional trains per year. That's a one followed by 11 zeros. Oh yeah. Digi digitalization and big data are supposed to, in an optimum way, ensure 100% operational availability of fleets. How can you interpret this huge amount of data and make railways match the future needs of transportation? Well, of course, you, you mentioned this very large number, and we're talking about huge amounts of data. Um, and that is a very big challenge. And that's, that's also where we make a difference. And the first thing we need to interpret the data is we need to be able to absorb the data, store it, and manage it. And for this, we use the Synalytics platform of Siemens, which is a platform we share across many other different Siemens entities, um, because it provides us a very scalable basis. We used to have a platform that's running for now a year and a half, and which is host on-premise, and today we announced the new platform the new version of it, which is fully cloud-based and based on uh, Amazon Web Services and, of course, on a lot of IP from Siemens. This is the, the underlying foundation that helps us to handle data and make sure we can work with these extremely large amounts of data. And they will not get smaller over time. Actually, every new generation of trains gets more talkative, so that numbers will get more zeros uh, very soon. The next layer on top, of course, is we need to interpret the data. We understand the data, but we have a large team of data scientists in, in Munich that is looking at with mathematical models on the data and trying to find patterns to predict failures, to understand conditions, and to give meaningful advice to our customers. And last but not least in this whole chain, we're using uh, a lot of domain experts. We have a support center in Siemens where people have a long experience in commissioning uh, vehicles or infrastructure, and they help us to make sure our models are correct. So the insights we deliver to our customers are meaningful and actionable. I think that is, is the big layer. So we have the underlying uh, platform, we have the applications and the analytics on top, and we have the domain expertise. And this platform today, we're also launching Radigent, which is our new solution um, that helps our customers manage their assets smarter. So we look at all the data, put it under one big 
combined suite and make it available much easier for our customers to consume and work with. Mr. Greff, from what I understand until now, the procedure functions this way. Connect the real world to a digital network and then create a digital representation of the real world objects. What are the results of the analytic processes? Imagine if I was a representative of a railway company, what benefits can I promise my board when I recommend them to invest in using train and track data? Well, the first thing, of course, is it's not only about the digital representation, but it has to bring or go back into the real world. If we don't make a change in the real world, there's nothing of business value we can really create. In the end, passengers want to be on time and commute where they need to go, and freight has to be on time as well. So what you can promise to your board is <clears throat> higher availability, meaning you can adhere to the schedules that you have, punctuality, meaning that you can trust the schedules you have, and also reduce cost because you save on energy and you save on unnecessary repair activities. So overall, your life cycle cost goes down. But in the end, what the passengers and, and the customers care for is, can I trust that operation? Is it delivering what it needs to do? And we say yes with data, you can exactly do that. From what I have heard at the Siemens booth here at the Innotrans, there are several customer pilot projects that are driving the implementation for data-driven services. As far as vehicles and infrastructures are connected, um, what are the topics you are focusing on this moment in particular? Well, of course, um, when we look at the vehicles, of course, we look at all those things that really create the, the major problems. On high-speed trains, there's everything around the boogie and the drive trains, so there's gearboxes, so there's bearings, motors, um, the electrical system, of course, and when we come to commuter trains, of course, we have to add doors, uh, making sure that doors open and close properly and they don't create an issue. Just imagine you have um, a commuter train somewhere, um, the door doesn't close properly and you just, or one door is even broken and needs to be locked, and passengers have to go through different, lead through different doors. That will add you an extra waiting time of a 10 seconds, 15 seconds per station. This adds up over time. So we need to make sure that those things really function very well. So it's all the, the, thing, the rotating parts, electrical parts, and the doors that the, the main components to look at. On the infrastructure side, we look in the moment on, on point machines, which of course is one of the critical and crucial elements in making sure the network operates, and on interlockings as well. Next to the failure prediction, we're also looking very much at understanding the status and understanding the performance of different elements. So just imagine you have um, an operation control system and interlocking on, on a network. You want to make sure that you optimize the throughput of trains um, by better planning and making sure that you don't get unnecessary delays because you scheduled them wrongly. Those are also things we're working on a lot because they have a tremendous impact, especially on very complex rail networks. People always like to hear stories with a happy ending. Are there examples that prove, yes, it's working, we can demonstrate to the whole world how perfect digital services are? Are there examples of systems already on duty or might be proud to tell us about? I'm very proud to tell about all the things we're doing. And when you look at our digital service center at Innotrans, all the examples that we have here are real cases. None of them is something we did up here for a show. That's all real cases. Yes, we had to very often anonymize that because not every customer wanted to have their names um, as an example here. Um, but these are all real cases and none of them is fake. But let me just give you two or three very interesting examples that, that I can talk about. Um, we, we just released a, a demo film where it shows really religion what it does. And you hear a very proud customer, UBB, talking about what, their, what data helps them to improve their operations and how it has an impact on their passengers. Because for them it's a lifeline, making sure they make a promise to the passengers to be on time, to bring the people where they need to be, and they do it better with data. And that's a promise they can now fulfill better, and that's exactly what they talk about in the film. So I'm very proud that our customer is so enthusiastic about this. It's not just us, it's the customer itself. All the, another good example is um, the, the Thameslink trains in, in, that we're just putting into operation in the UK. Um, we have installed a door monitoring because it's a very new door model, and we have to make sure that passengers can um, leave the train and enter the train in time without causing any delays and without having any problems. So that's a part where we have a system operation and it's working flawless since we started that. So I'm also very proud on that because it was a total new thing we developed. And of course, 
the high-speed trains in Europe are on a supervision from our side, very often make sure that um, our own service people can really <coughs> support them better. And also that, as I believe, over the last couple of months, we've done a very, very good job on this. Mr. Kress, thank you very much for sharing the latest information on digital services and for your time, of course. Folks, that's it for the moment. If you like to watch tomorrow, Periscope in at the same time. Our next guest will be Stefan Kemper, who will be telling us about infotainment and assistant technology. Join us on Wednesday. Please find details on Twitter and keep your mind to follow us. Bye bye from Berlin and thanks for watching. <laughs>